Good morning, everyone, and happy St. Patrick's Day. My name is Lynn Marquardt. I'm your host of the Simply Colorful Fibercast, and today's date is March 17th, 2018. So come aboard. We're going to make something today. Hello. Happy Saturday. I usually do this on Friday nights, I know, but I was still traveling, and I'll tell you all about it. In honor of St. Patrick's Day, we're going to be making some funky modern houses. And if you might remember, and I've been thinking about this on my trip all week in California about what I would be doing on Fibercast today, and I thought, I have to get going on my Kona challenge. So I'm going to tell you about that. Also, this is, this is not a tutorial. This is us sewing together. It's still a bit one way, but the way that we can make it two way for now is send me your pictures, send me your thoughts on what you're working on to Lynn at simplycolorful.com and I will share it back with everyone. You can also post it on the Simply Colorful Mystery Quilt Along Facebook page or on Patreon. And if you've not yet joined Patreon, I welcome you to do it. We'd love to have you in our community. But today is Firecast. And the first thing before I talk about the challenge is I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. I've not had coffee yet this morning. Oh, that's so good. It's amazing that stuff is legal. You should all get coffee if you haven't had any yet. Anyway, <laughs> the quilt behind me, I want to thank Kelsey from Blueberry Lane Studios. She made it, sewed it, and quilted it with her quilting business, Long Arm Quilting. And now she's donated this quilt to the TBI Survivors Guild or group. And we'll be delivering them in the next couple of months. April 25th, I think, is the date we're settling on. So I just wanted to show it. I wanted you to know it's not my work. It's Kelsey. She does amazing work. And I just love the new colors of the, the grays and the oranges, much like Joyce's, who did hers for us also in those, that colorway. So thank you, Kelsey. Um, the challenge. So what I've been challenged to do, along with everyone else in the Marathon Quilters Guild, is to take these pieces of fabric. Do you remember I was telling you I went to a guild meeting and I came home with all these different size pieces? Oh, and I forgot that I had these little pink ones. You know, you get on an airplane and you're doing all your business work and you're flying from the East Coast to the West Coast and you think of all the things you could be doing while you're sitting on this plane next to a stranger. <laughs> um, and I was thinking about all these colors and I forgot that I had these pinks. Anyway, I came home from a quilt guild meeting with all these colors of Kona fabrics and my challenge along and everyone else in the guild came home with colors of Kona. And our challenge is to put them in a quilt using these plus whites, grays and blacks and have them ready for June. And then they'll all be shown in the fall quilt group, um, to quilt show. Now, the way we got all these different colors of fabric is we all started, the, the program's team, Jean and Kelsey, gave us each a yard of fabric, of Kona fabric. So we all started with one piece. I started with this orange one. It was a full yard. And they said, okay, first step, rip it in half. I'm pretty sure I started with this one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Maybe I started with half a yard, it doesn't matter. Rip it in half. Keep one half for yourself. Give the next half to your neighbor. And everyone did that. And so then I was given this and I ripped it in half and I kept half of it and I gave the next half and so on and so forth. So you end up with all these different sized pieces. Everyone has the same colors, but different sizes, different volumes, if you will, in this quilt. So what I'm thinking about so all that is to say, let's get sewing. I am just here early today before I go out to a basketball game. So what I wanted to do was just dig into this. I don't have a current. Oh, this was my, this was my half, my yard, and then became half a yard. Phew. I was afraid I wasn't getting that. Okay. I think I am going to make a modern quilt with a lot of 
gray, black, and white. So mom, yes, more gray. I know, I know this. I went and I got these at Joann's oh, last week or the week before. And I got a great deal. It was Kona that was on sale. And then I had a coupon for another 25% off everything, no matter if it was on sale. So I think this Kona cotton ended up being about $4 a yard. So I was very happy with that. What I'm thinking of doing is making, and I should have drawn this out and I will draw it out, but today I just want to practice making a square house. I think I'm going to have picture a big gray quilt, say 60 by 60. And then I'm going to have a pane, like a window pane, within which I want to have these funky houses. Each house will be made with one color of the Kona and one background, be it white, gray, or black. And then they'll be in a row down. And they'll all be color except for maybe one at the bottom or the middle that will just be black and white. So hopefully it'll be very graphic. Um, some will have contrast, some won't. I frankly, in my mind, when I was on the plane, thought this was a lighter gray. So it's looking, it's reading to me awfully dark compared to the black, but that's okay. Um, because for example, check this out. I mean, this, this chartreuse, we've talked about this before, this poison green, if you will, poison in a good way, will show up beautifully, right? Um, similarly, any of these colors will go great against a white. Now, here's another thing I was thinking about on the plane. They said, if I remember right, we were supposed to have either warm, well, I guess these can be warm colors. I think of green as a cool color. This is where I really need Lima. Lima, if you're there, swing by. <laughs> I'm kidding. I think Lima's up at the farm right now, up at Tompton Farm. You should see the barn they're building up there. I've talked about them in the past. They rescue animals from slaughter and from early, early demise, and they do wonderful work. And it's in northern New Hampshire right now, and there's snow galore, and they're building a barn and taking care of the animals at the same time. Anyway, Lima has her design expertise and her color expertise. Okay, enough about that. So I will get her consult probably at the next guild meeting. What I'm thinking is these greens, don't those feel nice? They feel nice to me together. Like, and that's the first time I've done that, but I'm liking that. Whereas all of these light colors, you see these, oh, now I'm hiccuping, or these warm colors. <laughs> yeah. Those also look cool together. Oh, I have hiccups. But I'm not liking them together together. Although, hmm. What I think I'm going to do, because it's St. Patrick's Day, and in honor of the, the green, I'm going to stick with these. Oh, the other rule is you do have to include all of these colored fabrics. You don't have to include all of it, all of it, but you have to have at least a smidgen of each one of these. So, of course, I'm thinking, wise guy that I am, why can't I put these on my back? I can make a nice label with these if need be, if we decide we like just the green. So that's my current thinking. Let's get going. I've got my Bernina fired up. She's in much need of some oiling, as you know. Let's see, put that there so you can at least see it. And I think because I have most of this dark green, I am going to use that first to play with. For anyone who maybe it was, it's gotta be a few years ago, we, we were making the funky houses. And if you go out on the Simply Colorful website, there are some free patterns out there for the funky houses. I'm not even gonna use a pattern. I'm just going to whack away and make one. And I even, 
See, this is not as light as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to do white, white and green. Am I going to do that? No. You know what? You'll be able to see that sort of. I'm going to do gray and green. We're experimenting. This is an experimental fiber cast because I wanted to at least say hi to you and hear how you're doing before I go out to the basketball game. So again, send me pictures or say hello if you're out there to lynn at simplycolorful.com. I so miss our, our weekly touch base on Friday nights if we don't do it. And, but the good news is, so here, and I, there have been a few Friday nights recently that I haven't done this, right? Which in five years, I think we've done, we've missed more Friday nights the last couple of months for a storm, for travel, I think two travel times. We didn't have electricity. Was it as recently as last Friday or the Friday before? Anyway, it all blurs together. But I miss it. The goal always and forever will continue to be, do you believe I just said that forever? That's a long time. Will be to do Fibercast at 8 p.m. Eastern on Friday nights. So if you're ever in doubt, it's a Friday night. Even if it's not 8, it's 9, you can go look at the link and you can replay it. You can always send me notes in between. So send me, even if you're watching this on a Wednesday and you're working on something, send me a picture of what you're working on and I'll show it on the next Fibercast. So just send it to lynn at simplycolorful.com. Okay. You know, I wouldn't be so particular if I... I work with scraps all the time, but this fabric, I know that I'm limited in how much I have. So I'm, that's the only reason I'm being a little more careful here. Not very careful, though, to tell you the truth. I'm just going to cut some strips of this green so that I can make my the front facade of my house and i know it's hard to imagine this because i haven't shown you a picture yet have i but all i'm going to do is make a house that measures about six to eight inches it's not going to be big and it's going to be made out of green on gray background so it's not going to pop much either but that's by design that's what i want so even i'm just going to literally make one of those, and here's my gray. And I'm living on the edge because I have my coffee right over here. But so, oh, so today is a big day. My niece, Bob's niece, Callie Corby, is on her way to the state championship game for her varsity basketball team high school basketball team how big is that we are so proud of her this goes down in history for our family for her this is something she will have with her forever so we're very proud of these girls they've they've had a long season they started the beginning um she's a senior she's going on to college next year and this they have taken this Gee, and I saw their record. They've played like 26 games, if, if not more. And they are playing in the final out at an arena in Springfield, Massachusetts, home of the Basketball Hall of Fame. The whole team has been out there since yesterday. This is high school. They had a banquet there last night and um, we just, it's so exciting. Can you see what I'm doing here? Oh, I should get what Leah sent me. My board, where is my board? 
Oh, it has a white background. Oh, well, next one. This is how freeform these houses are. And believe me, this type of quilting is not for everyone. And I get that. I really do. So all I'm doing right now is <clears throat> is I'm making my house out of pieces of fabric. So those might be windows. And then this can go between them. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> see, those are windows. And then we need a door. This is a door. It looks like a person with the eyes, right? And I think that's part of the reason why we like these funky houses is they do remind us of um, there is a there is a face component to it. Okay. I don't want this house to become too big. They always do. What I've done over the years is I've, I'll make this. I've made these houses before, and then I think people asked for a pattern, and so I created a couple of patterns that don't appear this funky, if you will, and they're a good place to start. And you can upsize or downsize them, too. Okay. All she needs now is a roof. And in my in my fantasy world, the roof is going to also be made out of green, which I'll do, I'll cut a little later. Okay? And then it'll be surrounded by gray. And that is what we're making today gray and uh, gray on the bottom and the top so it will it will appear floating let me see if anyone's out there oh and we're going to conclude not that we're ready to conclude but i just saw this i'm going to read us a poem at the end of the show so if you like emily dickinson stick around Messages, messages, messages. It's coming up. Going to my Gmail. Hey, hey, Carol. Hi. Guess who sent you a T-shirt from California? Talk about going around the world. Oh, Carol says, what a lovely surprise. I'm so, I'm so glad that you're out there. She says, hi, Lynn and all Fibercasters. How nice to be able to watch you live at lunchtime on a Saturday. Carol is over in the UK. She says, today I'm going to be using my pineapple trim tool that I got this week. I've been playing with scraps and will carry on to see if I can empty my scrap box a little. I would never have tried these without it, she says. Have a wonderful sewing weekend. Oh, those are cool. Look at that. So, Carol, you have to tell us. Oh, I like how, like that one, you see the real light pineapples in it. They look so different, right? The same pattern. So, a pineapple trim tool. Those are wonderful. I need to do that. I really do. I have, the scraps are ridiculous. I'm glad you're out there. Down here, I, I, I love to see everyone's comments on YouTube afterwards. Oh, I know what I wanted to, to acknowledge and thank is, I'm gonna take my white off and I'm gonna go with a gray thread. 
Last week, weren't we lucky to have Jean here? Thank you, Jean, if you're out there for coming over and sharing your time with us and your expertise. I have come to find out that maybe the audio was a little light, so I apologize. We'll have to remember that the next time and really be careful to speak loudly and and I'll, I'll investigate another audio source. I'm sure it was the speaker in my Chromebook is not, is not that fancy. Okay, so thank you for the feedback. That was great. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm even going to wind a bobbin. See this color? This will blend in much better than that white. It's not that technically it's going to show, but you know me, if I get, I'll get running on a quilting project and I may iron the pieces to open too wide or there may be a seam at the end that's not quite as secure and it'll open up and voila, you will see the thread. So better to That's right, I forgot this is really loud. So we're driving out to Springfield at 8.30 today. Almost done. on Julia's cooking shows when they would use the, oh, and look, you couldn't even see it. How unsatisfying was that? Here's my bobbin. When Julia Child would use her mixer, that would always make noise. You'd have to stop and wait for it. That's where we could use PBS's editing right there. If we were a real show, you wouldn't have had to endure that. So do you remember, I was thinking of this the other day. I'm gonna move this over so you can see the thread. Might be a little more satisfying. I was remembering how years ago when I was a kid, and I think maybe I've shared this with you, that I used to bake cookies and use a toaster in the corner, one of those little silver toasters before they had toaster ovens. And I would pretend that was the camera and I was Julia Child. <laughs> I used to love that. my sisters out there. Speaking of Julia, she might be sleeping. My sister is working a lot these days. She's like program managing a big IT modernization project. And they've got some go live date coming up. Lots of eyes on these modernization projects these days, that's for sure. Which is good, you know, that people care about what you're working on. That's, they say that's half the battle is people, if we're gonna spend a lot of time working, we wanna know what we're working on is worthwhile and worthy and matters, makes a difference. Okay, so now I just deconstruct and hopefully, I think what's gonna happen is this will get trimmed down, and I'll show you what I mean. So first, I am sewing my windows. See what I mean? I didn't backstitch there. So that could get torn. I should I should get better and just backstitch that. Okay. Have this. Set the seam. As far as 
far as which way to iron on these, these funky houses, it does not matter. Okay, so there are two walls and windows. Now, I guess this, now this is the door and this is my center wall. I'll sew that and I'll trim a little. Can I tell you how nice it is to run the sewing machine? It's so unbelievable. Just feels good under the fingers. Probably what knitting must feel like when you get back in the groove of knitting. I've, I must admit, I've never, and I'm not saying I won't ever, but I just don't have, you know how you go through these phases of which craft is really doing it for you. Knitting isn't for me right now, but I can imagine if you haven't knit for a while and you get back to it, it must feel very soothing. And that must sound ridiculous to someone who doesn't get our fiber art thing. I did learn one of my coworkers, Pam, is a knitter. That was fun to learn. Oh, so for all of my Northern California people out there, you live in the most one of the most beautiful places on earth. I just love being there. I walk out, especially in the morning, I discovered you can breathe better out there. It's just, and it was raining all week in Northern California. So right there, I found one seam that both looked pretty straight and flat, so I didn't have to cut anything. But now I want to show you, I have to trim. I'm doing this upside down so that you can see the emergence of the house. So see how I want to sew this on there? That will be the top and the doors I've made smaller. Now, before I do that, I'm going to take my ruler. And, you know, in fact, I desire for my house is not to have such straight walls. This is going to be one of those blocks that if I keep it, someone from afar, let's and this is going to be hanging in a quilt show. <laughs> Thank God it's not a juried quilt show. They have to take it because I'm a member of the guild. Anyway, if you're standing across the room and you look across at this quilt, I do not suppose this house, when it's done, is going to be the one that stands out. But, at, but there will be others that will have more contrast and you will see as you're across the room. But then as you get closer, I hope at some point you, you do see this house and it's an aha. Wow. What else is there? And it draws you in. So I'm hoping. Okay. So now, and I don't, in fact, I want my windows to be a little off kilter. that. Do you think I could find this Kona cotton this morning? That's why I was a little late. I eventually found it rolled up in a piece of plastic, in a plastic bag on a shelf way over in the corner. And I'm sure I put it there for safekeeping. It was classic. Okay. 
there's that. Now I'm going to sew this on either side. And then we'll do that across the top. Da, 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 da. It's coming alive. So weird. Houses don't come alive. <laughs> it just occurred to me you could see what had just happened. That's I am the epitome of a lazy sewer. Kelsey and Jean would never do that. So I started out up here and my tail end of my thread got caught in my walking foot and I just kept sewing even though the whole thing bunched up because I knew I could get it to the end and then I could pull out that thread or cut it off. <laughs> Look at that. That is not good technique. It's a good thing, again, we don't have, the judges aren't judging the technique. <laughs> oh, this is making my day, you guys. For everyone who's out there, I hope you're going to have a great weekend. Bob's father is coming over at 8.30. So I don't know what time it is now. It's 8.14, so we have 15 minutes. I purposely took a shower before I turned the camera on. So we have another 10 minutes. How many of you do that? Steal away 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do some sewing. I must say until... I probably don't do it as much as I should or would want to because, because frankly, once I get up here, I do take more than 15 minutes. But having a place where you can sew, and I, I see this online all the time, and I think you'll agree, is once you have a place that you can call your own and you can keep set up, there's nothing like it. So you can steal away and get 15 minutes. You don't have to worry about picking up for dinner or... Um, you know, tidying up for when dad gets home, that kind of thing. Or when the kids have people over, it's just. I think I saw a question on one Facebook group the other day. Should I turn my spare bedroom into a sewing room? And my thought was, heck yeah. For that very reason. You can just, you know, like I do on Friday nights or today on Saturday, Believe me, when I turn the camera off, I turn everything off. There are scraps on the floor. And tomorrow, when I have the whole day, I think, I hope, I hope. KB, I'm not coming out to see you this weekend, by the way. I know I was all hot to trot to do that, but next week I'm here, and then I have to go to Kansas City. So I'm probably not going to get out to see you until April. I'm so Sorry, I need to see you guys. Plus, I have something for Tommy. Okay. Oh, I should show you what I'm doing. So this is the fun part, right? Here is my house, and I know the contrast is not a lot, so I apologize. But these are my windows, and there's my door. And now I'm going to trim off the bottom and the top so that I can put the roof on and put the... the external side on and this ends up being pretty not square right look at that there's that this I'm going to use the fabric first can you see how this really though there is no real rhyme or reason you're, you're drawing with fabric or painting with fabric and just go with it. And I must say, having made a few of these, you've watched me make these. This, is, this can be really fun and free, free form sewing. And you can do this for months. 
literally you can start to pile up just these piles of house blocks. And you can make churches and you can make a hospital and you can make um, a fire station and a school and all yeah, trees, anything that you can find in a community you make and you make all these units, cars, you know, anything, dogs, fire hydrants, whatever you want. Then for me, the, the part that takes a lot of thought is the putting it together. That can take a lot of creative energy. This is mindless. You can do this. I hope you're seeing that it doesn't matter what it looks like. But once you get to the point where you're organizing it on the board and you're trying to look back at it up close and then from way back, um, that's where you really get to playing with design. Do you want it to look, uh, do you want it to have rows? And I'm not, I mean, I'm at the very beginning of figuring it out. You can imagine, and you see online, just the amazing ways that people will organize these house quilts. And you think, how did they even think of that? So this I'm cutting pretty broad because this is going to be my the top of my house. I'm going to cut a triangle out of it. And this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to think about construction of your house. Although it might not be that bad. But I'm going to get smart and reuse something, some pieces. So here's this. Now I'm going to get my gray and I'm going to, I'm going to make like a flying goose. In fact, can I do it with this? I do believe I can. It's not quite big enough. I need a gray that same width. About the same width. So what are you doing today? Who's taking a walk? You know what we're going to start to do? Because by the way, I'm going to start... I'm going to be doing more of this more often, more frequently over the coming weeks and months. Um, and I'm going to be incorporating daily exercise into our quilting re regimen, regime, regimen. So I'm interested to hear what you all are doing. So now, there's that. You know what? I'm just going to do this. This might work. And in lieu of a pencil, I'm just going to score this. With my pin. Yeah, that works. Oh, thought of something new. I'm scoring it. I don't even know if the camera can pick that up, but by scoring it, I can see where to sew this. And that's all I need is just an S approximation on these funky houses. And we'll see if this works at all. It should. The question is, what do I cut? Where and why? Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't do like I do. So I'm cutting just the gray up the center here. And 
And then cutting my gray corners off that I should have done two seams and so that I could reuse those, but I didn't. Okay, so here's this. That's gonna be the top of my house, baby. Could it get any more simple than this? I tell you, if you write in and tell me this is like kindergarten, I would understand. And look at this, the way I did that, of course, I should have known this, did not work well because I have no point on my house because of the way I just did that. So I tell you what I'm gonna do because quilting is a learning experience. I'm gonna cut one of these off. Quilting really does teach you how to solve problems or it's one way. So now I'm going to take the gray again. Where's my tip gray? Oh, I dropped it on the floor. Hang on. Hang on. There's my exercise for the day. <laughs> Just kidding. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, don't, don't do this like I'm doing it. It's wasting too much fabric, but at least we're getting a prototype. So here I am. Now we have a roof that has a point. Okay, and once I sew this up, I think I just saw my father-in-law out of the corner of my eye driving up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to finish sewing this on. Oh, that's right, this is where it just, now it starts to get funky. It's gonna work. Have no fear. Have no fear. We just put a roof on. We put two sides on and then we're going to call it a fiber cast. So there's the roof on. Now I'm going to take this piece that we cut earlier, this thinner piece, and just lay it down and do two seams. I'd slowed down my machine for my bobbin winding. There's one. Do the other one while we're right here, and then I'll iron them both. Now, while I'm finishing up, I want to challenge everyone to spend 60 minutes, if you can, in your sewing room this weekend, working on something that maybe you've been thinking about, or you know you have to finish. And if you want to take the challenge, 60 minutes in the sewing room and 30 minutes walking or doing some form of exercise. And I'll try and do the same. And I'm not even going to say how many 30 minutes in the next week we do. 
but at least if we start talking about it, it will it will work in one of two ways. It will either make us never want to talk about it again, <laughs> and you'll tune off, or maybe it'll get maybe it'll get me moving a little bit. I don't know. It's a constant struggle, but I noticed in my hotel room, they had more mirrors there, and I did notice. I think I've been eating a little more than I've been exercising lately. So. And that's easy to acknowledge on a Saturday morning when you have the whole weekend ahead of you and life looks good. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all for joining me on Making a Funky House. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Again, 16 minutes in your studio. It's amazing what we can accomplish, especially together. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you maybe on another surprise one this weekend or next Friday night. Bye.